guys, this is Dave with Gazadio. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the iFi Uno, which is basically a budget-friendly mini desktop amp. And while it is a simple device for its price, it's quite versatile and actually has some pretty practical features, which we'll talk about. But first, let's go over what's included in the box. Of course, we have the Uno itself. It also comes with a USB Type-C to Type-A cable. It does not come with a Type-C to Type-C or C to Lightning in case you want to connect it to your phone. So you'll have to get one of those on your own. And it also comes with some sticky pads that actually help secure it to your desk. And then it comes with a cool little sticker. As for inputs, outputs, lights, buttons, and knobs. On the front, we have two buttons. One changes the EQ setting, depending on whether you're using it for gaming, movies, or music. Second button is the power match button, which is basically a, a high low gain button. There's also a tiny white light that lights up when you're in high gain. We then have a power slash volume control wheel with backlighting that changes colors based on the audio format that you're listening to and then a 3.5 single-ended output. On the top, there are three light indicators, and depending on which listening mode, again, that you choose, so gaming mode, video mode, or music mode, it will indicate that by lighting up the appropriate light indicator. And then on the back, we have a pair of RCA outputs, a Type-C input that doubles both as an audio input and a power input. So just bear in mind that if you're using something other than a PC or laptop as a source, it will draw power from that device and could cause some battery drain. Now, as for specifications and design, the Uno uses an ES8219MQ DAC chip, which is actually the same DAC chip used in the iFi Go Link. And it supports up to 32-bit PCM and DSD-256. As for power output, the 3.5 single ended output gives you 211 milliwatts at 32 ohms and 39 milliwatts at 300 ohms. As far as the design, it's pretty cool. I like it and it kind of, again, it follows in the same design language as some of iFi's Zen products. But instead of a metal housing, it's made from a plastic or a polymer. Subsequently, the device itself is quite light, only weighing about 92 grams, which is great if you're using it on the go. However, it can be a little bit hard to get it to stick in place on your desk. The good news is they include these little sticky pads that actually stick to whatever surface you're using it and it helps to keep the device in place. Okay, let's talk about the sound of the iFi Uno. So as I had mentioned earlier, there are three different listening modes that you can choose from depending on your usage. And these modes basically implement different EQs based on the type of content that you're listening to, and they can be disabled as well. And I should also mention that these EQs are implemented in the analog domain, not digitally. So the changes in the sound are occurring after the audio signal is converted to analog, which is a good thing because the original digital audio signal doesn't undergo any changes. And now I also understand that most people are not gonna be using gaming or movie mode for listening to music, which is a very good thing because those modes definitely don't do music any favors. And the issue is because of the way they have the upper mids EQ'd, because those frequencies are EQ'd for either enhancing dialogue or sound effects. And it works great for that. But with music, it can cause instruments and vocals to sound somewhat unnatural and can even come across as harsh in some cases. But again, my guess is no one will be using those modes for listening to music anyway. Now, the first mode is gaming mode, which adds a pretty substantial bass and sub bass boost. As a matter of fact, this mode is going to give you the most bass presence out of the three. And I imagine the intention is probably to give explosions a little more impact. Now, as I mentioned a minute ago, it also sounds as though there is a boost in the upper mids, which seems to aid in accentuating 
sound effects. Now, I'm not much of a gamer, so I can't really say how much of a difference this EQ preset would make in the overall gaming experience, but based on my knowledge of sound, I can kind of see why they would configure the EQ this way for this type of application. And then the second mode is movie mode, which sounds like there's something similar going on in the upper mid. So an upper mid boost, again, that I imagine is for the purpose of enhancing dialogue and sound effects, which it does pretty well. And there also seems to be a bass boost as well, but it's not nearly as prominent as it is in gaming mode. And I did test this on a couple of movies and it does seem to enhance the movie experience fairly significantly. And then the third EQ is music mode, which basically just adds a bass boost from what I can tell. But it's a pretty significant bass boost. However, it sounds like it's implemented very well because I didn't really notice it affecting the lower mids as far as bleeding or causing muddiness. So it sounds like the boost is mainly occurring in the sub bass frequencies. Now, honestly, I typically don't use bass boost. That being said, the best bass boost I've heard when I have used them seem to all come from iFi products. They just know how to implement those really well, in my opinion. And now the last mode, of course, is stock mode. So there is no EQ and this is going to give you the most linear sound presentation. So this is with all of the other EQs disabled. And again, it's gonna be the most linear. There might be just a little bit of warmth, but it's ever so slight, and it doesn't really seem to impact the sound quality at all. Now, speaking of sound quality, this was my favorite mode for listening to music. And again, was the mode I did 75% of my listening in. And for $79, I have to say, this little thing sounds pretty good. And in terms of basic, sound performance. I would have to say it's at least on par with most of my other USB DACs at or around $100. So the 7 Hertz 71, the K1, K2, Moondrop Dawn, although I would say the Dawn might edge it out slightly in terms of dynamics only. And when I say basic sound performance, I'm referring not only to its power output, but also its overall clarity and just how transparent it is. But just to take a step back, when I'm assessing these types of devices, I think it's prudent for me to always take into consideration the goal or objective of the company for a given device and also take into consideration the target consumer. And I'm pretty sure the goals of this device are affordability and versatility. And my guess is that their target consumer is not necessarily an audiophile as much as maybe someone on a budget who isn't just looking for something to listen to music with, but something they can also use for a variety of tasks, but also including listening to music. And my guess is they want this device to simply give them a better audio experience than what they might get if they were to plug directly into a laptop or computer. And this does meet those objectives, in my opinion. And it doesn't just offer better audio performance, it offers much better audio performance. So taking all of that into consideration, I have no problem at all giving the iFi Uno a recommendation because again, it does everything it's supposed to do and it does it well. And on top of that, it's only $79. So it's built well, it's versatile, it sounds great, and it's very affordable. It's definitely a thumbs up for me, for sure. And again, I do recommend this device. So that concludes my review of the iFi Uno. If you're new to the Giz Audio channel and like our videos, please take a minute and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to go a step further with your support, we also now have a Patreon. I'll make sure and leave a link in the description. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please like this video, please share this video. I hope you have an awesome day.